began issuing these international uh, arrest warrants in 2006, uh, we have managed to issue 1,146 indictments in 33 countries. Uh, and uh, in Europe, it's where we have been seeing uh, some movements. And if I can use my statistics here, uh, I will say Belgium has uh, so far tried nine, Sweden three, France three, Netherlands two, Canada two, and uh, uh, Germany one, Norway one, Finland one, Switzerland one. Mm -hmm. And those who, who, who were extradited also, these are the trials that uh, were tried in the uh, domestic jurisdiction in yeah. Europe. There are also those that were uh, uh, referred to Rwanda by USA, uh, which, is, which has five, DRC, which has five, the Netherlands, which has four. Uh, actually, they were three, but yesterday's uh, extradition, mm. there are now four. Uganda has three, the ICTR referrals are three, Denmark two, Canada two, Germany one, uh, Republic of Congo one, and Malawi. Mm. So we are not seeing enough uh, work being done uh, uh, by Africa, mm. uh, which is a very big challenge. Actually, if we are talking of uh, numbers, 1,146 cases, in, uh, indictments issued in, uh, in 33 countries. Mm. In actually, Africa. actually uh, 964 have been issued in Africa. And this is where only Uganda uh, managed to send three, whereas DRC sent five and the other countries are yet to send. Although Uganda and the DRC has, uh, have managed to send some uh, countries, uh, rather some, some, some suspects yeah. here for trial, uh, we have also registered a lot of cases. Uh, DRC having more than 400 and uh, Uganda having more than uh, almost 300. And that comes, the, the, the two countries have almost ca approaching 700. So what do, what do you think is the reason behind the reluctance of some of the African countries, briefly? There could be many reasons, but uh, uh, the, 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 the core one is uh, lack of uh, political will. Mm -hmm. Another so issue is that when we see these people as uh, criminals who should be prosecuted, yeah. Uh, some uh, African countries see them as a, a labor force. Let's talk about Europe. Uh, Europe, uh, especially the UK, which is home to five well-known genocide suspects. What do you think uh, is the reason behind the UK's hesitancy to either extradite these suspects or even try them in their own uh, courts in, in the UK? Yes. Uh, what I can say on the UK, we, lost, we, we actually... Uh, wasted a lot of time pursuing uh, the five uh, fugitives through an ex extradition process which took 10 years. But uh, it was in the 2017 when uh, they denied Rwanda extradition. And we said, if you are now denying Rwanda an extradition of these five men, then you should uh, prosecute them. And uh, there have been uh, some good progress though it has been uh, starting, uh, they came here, we worked with them, and we, we, we were supposed, and we are supposed to, to, be, to continue working if there had not been uh, COVID restrictions. Because I remember even when in March 2020, uh, when they were here, and uh, I think the government uh, called them back. Mm. But we are still in touch through video conference. We hold video conferences every month. Well, it is going to take time, but I don't see them enjoying impunity. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time. Okay. Very lastly, um, coming back to the Netherlands, which extradited uh, Rutunga Vena uh, the other day, is there any other spe special uh, relationship that the government of Rwanda has with the Netherlands? And if you could also touch uh, briefly about uh, people, the genocide deniers and uh, those promoting genocide ideology, what is the situation? Are you planning to prosecute well, them? Well, the Netherlands, we have good working relationship. And uh, first of all, we should uh, know that uh, they have been uh, our development partners in the justice sector, where they have been uh, uh, helping us in uh, infrastructure uh, building, uh, such as courts, 
such as the, 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 the Mpanga prison, which yeah. is recognized as an international uh, recognized uh, facility. So, and those are the actual the parameters under which they examine when they want to, to send some people here. They will look into fair trial rights, which we have. We have good laws. And we have also uh, legal precedents uh, created by the ICTR and the, the European Court of Human Rights in the, uh, Sweden versus Ahorujese. We have good uh, case laws uh, to, to suggest uh, to uh, any country that uh, they are going to be fair trial in Rwanda. But we also uh, should not forget that uh, Netherlands is uh, a country that uh, has is the seat of two global courts, the International yeah. uh, Court of Justice, yeah. which handles matters of uh, disputes between states, yeah. and the International Criminal Court, yeah. which handles individual uh, cases of uh, cr crimes, international crimes. Yeah. Now, you cannot uh, at one time be a host or a seat of uh, these global uh, courts. The benchmark of justice. Yes, the benchmark and of justice, and yet don't, and also entertain impunity. That yeah. would be a controversy. Are you planning to prosecute genocide deniers and those who are promoting genocide? Well, there is a law that punishes them. Yeah. There is a law that punishes them. Those who are abroad, especially those yes, who are Yes, yes, yes. Our, our, our Rwandan courts can, can, can uh, and our law allows prosecuting a Rwandan uh, who, who, who commits uh, an offense outside its jurisdiction, mm. uh, when you are a, a Rwandan, then going by the nationality principle, the mm. national of a country, you can prosecute that. So, H Have you issued warrants for such people? Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. But, but are you uh, planning to do that? I think there is, n there is a nothing that stops us to do that. John Bosco Sibuenore, the head of Genocide Fugitive Tracking Unit at the National Public Prosecution. Many thanks for your time indeed. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.